Welcome back to Dielectric Videos. On today's episode, I'm going to show you how to build a capacitive dropper using minimal component count and to provide sufficient current for most microcontroller or other small IoT applications. Now for a capacitive dropper, the main benefit is it does not require any active switching electronics to produce a fixed DC output. It does require an AC input, it won't run on DC, and it's very important to note that a capacitive dropper does not isolate the output electrically from the input. Whatever you have connected to your capacitive dropper will effectively be as if it were plugged directly into the AC mains. Anything else making contact with this load will be at mains potential and can thus, thus present a shock hazard. For this reason, capacitive droppers are really best suited for loads that are going to be encased in an insulated storage case away from where anyone could make contact with it and receive a dangerous shock. The way that a capacitive dropper works fundamentally is by using the reactance of a capacitor as a non-dissipative uh, current limiting device. You could achieve this same circuit using a resistor, but on an AC supply, a resistor would dissipate basically all of the heat from the current being driven through it, whereas a capacitor effectively charges up and discharges with voltage uh, and as the voltage rises and falls, and in doing so limits the current that can flow into the Zener diode at a particular time. By doing that, it actually provides a current limiting feature without actually dissipating any power. Another disadvantage of the capacitive dropper, unfortunately, is its power factor is very poor, typically well under 0.1, possibly even below 0.05, depending on the ratio of the output voltage to the input voltage. But for small loads that draw comparatively low current, a poor power factor on a power supply is not actually that big of a problem. No actual energy is, is uh, wasted apart from the energy that's dissipated in the power lines due to the small additional amount of current placed across them. So it does make for effectively an ideal uh, power supply option for powering small electronics when you don't want to include a complicated and prone to failure switch mode power supply. So how does this circuit work? When connected to 120 volts, the uh, oscillating AC waveform, which is basically coming in to this circuit, is effectively limited by this uh, capacitor, like I said, as the capacitor charges and discharges, only a finite amount of charge can actually make it across, which limits the overall current driving through the remainder of the circuit. The 8.1 volt or slightly higher, this is really an approximate value, Zener diode, is placed across the power line. By doing this, it restricts the maximum voltage that can be generated by the output of this capacitor to a forward voltage of positive 8.1 volts, that's where the Zener goes into reverse breakdown, and to a minimum negative voltage of minus 0.6 volts when current is flowing in the opposite direction through the diode. Now to make sure the capacitor continuously passes AC current, there has to always be a way for voltage to flow in both directions through the Zener. If you included a uh, diode that does not break down across this line, you would actually not get any voltage to flow through it, and the, or any current to flow through it, and the voltage at the cathode would rise all the way up to the full voltage of the 120 volts. You do actually then therefore need a, uh, a diode or other element that can pass current in both directions. Now since we're basically going to be receiving half wave rectified pulses going up to positive uh, 8.1 or slightly above 8.1 volts, we're effectively going to see pulses coming out of the output. By rectifying these pulses through an additional diode and charging a capacitor, we can then smooth these out to a relatively steady DC supply voltage. In this case, uh, it'll be around just under 8 volts, since when this diode is under full uh, current conduction, it will actually go slightly higher than 8.1 volts, and then that is actually then subtracted by about 0.6 volts as this rectifier diode uh, drops its forward current. Now that uh, 8 to 8.5-ish volts is going to charge this capacitor, and then subsequently can be or regulated to an extremely stable 5 volt supply for the microcontroller by using a 7805 regulator or similar regulator. Using a comparatively small number of components, we've effectively created a stable DC voltage supply from an oscillating AC input supply. The last couple of components I should mention are you want to put a, a high value resistor, something about one mega ohm, across your capacitor to discharge it when the device is not in use. If you don't put this here and you unplug the load, the entire power supply, then there is still going to potentially be up to 170 volts of DC voltage on this capacitor which will have nowhere to flow until a user unluckily comes and puts their fingers across the output and receives a minor shock from the, from the capacitor. Placing a resistor across it to discharge it ensures that this is not an issue. The other resistor here is a 22 ohm or approximate, uh, approximately something between 10 and 30 ohm resistor, which serves to limit the inrush current when the power supply is first plugged into the mains. 
If there's zero volts across this capacitor and it's initially plugged in with, say, the full 170 volts peak from the 120 volt RMS AC supply across the capacitor, this will effectively look like a dead short for a moment, and that will place an exceptionally large amount of current through this zener, which could end up damaging it. That's why you put in a large uh, pulse withstanding carbon composition resistor in series with the input, simply to limit the magnitude of that inrush current. You want to use something like carbon composition so that it withstands large pulses. A uh, metal film resistor may work for a little while, but after enough uh, insertion and unplugging cycles, you will find that most metal film resistors will actually burn open as a result of the transient pulse current. So that's really the overview of how you assemble this capacitive dropper on a conceptual level. Now we can take a quick look at some of the mathematics involved with calculating this. To calculate the impedance of the capacitor, the formula is 1 over j times 2 pi fc where F is the frequency of the, line, uh, of the line signal, and C is the capacitance of the uh, capacitor that you've chosen. You also want to make sure that the voltage rating of the capacitor is high enough that it deals with transient voltages effectively. 400 volts is actually a little higher than you really need. You could probably get away with a 300 or even a 250, but you wouldn't want anything less than 250 volts since the peak voltage for the AC cycle is actually 170 volts when it's 120 volt RMS input. Now, you don't have to worry about the J if you're just calculating the reactance. The J is just a convenient tool for actually calculating the phase angle that will be produced by the capacitor when it's in, uh, in an AC circuit. In reality, if you just want to build a capacitive dropper, you only have to worry about the magnitude of the impedance, which is the capacitive reactance. For a 3.3 microfarad uh, capacitor, this will be about 803 ohms of capacitive reactance. To calculate the RMS current that would go through a full bridge rectified uh, capacitive dropper, you simply take the RMS voltage, which is 120 volts, and divide it by the reactance to get the RMS current that will flow through the device. That being said, however, since we built a very simple capacitive dropper, which uses a Zener diode across the line as the rectifier, as opposed to a full bridge rectifier, we're only going to see half of the voltage pulses making it through the rectified diode into the capacitor. This cuts our effective average current in half, which then basically leaves us with 74.6 milliamps at the output. It doesn't sound like a huge amount, but if you think about it, the average microcontroller is probably not going to need more than maybe 20 milliamps, and then if you want to do something like driving a relay, you might need another 20 or 30 milliamps, which is going to put you well within the range of what this uh, power supply can provide to the load. So that's basically how you want to build a simple capacitive dropper if you're interested in designing a very simple circuit which provides a continuous supply of power, albeit at a poor power factor, to a small DC load. Here's an example of one that I've actually constructed here. This will actually be inserted inside a PVC pipe, which is why I've arranged it to be fully collinear. And you can see here I'm using a 400 volt, 3.3 uh, microfarad capacitor. I'm using a 22 ohm carbon, or actually a 33 ohm, I guess, carbon composition resistor in series with this capacitor a one mega ohm metal film resistor across the capacitor, and I'm basically using a single rectifier diode as my uh, rectifier stage, and a single Zener diode as my uh, capacitive dropper voltage regulator, which is basically just making sure that the rectified voltage on this capacitor doesn't actually go too high at any given time. I'm feeding that into a five volt linear regulator, which is then supplying my microcontroller. I additionally have put a 330 microfarad 16 volt capacitor across the Zener diode to make sure the regulator always has a stable input voltage, even though there may be some ripple from the rectified input. So this little power supply does actually work, and I can show you in a minute how it actually will power this Arduino directly from the mains. So I've got a regular AC mains power supply here. What I'm going to do is show you this Arduino basically being powered directly from 120 volts AC. If I can keep the wires connected, you can see the red light is on and the microcontroller is operating exactly the way you would expect it to. Now this works really well, like I said, for encapsulated insulated devices that won't come in contact with humans. You definitely don't want to plug your computer into this to program it while it's connected to the mains as that will energize your entire computer at mains voltage. And if you're so unlucky as to have your computer grounded to earth, you'll actually short circuit it and either blow a fuse or destroy something in your computer. So it's best to make sure that when you're programming your microcontroller, it is not actually energized from the mains power. Anyway, I hope you learned something from watching this short video about capacitive droppers. I want to emphasize that this is an experiment that is to be done only at your own risk, since it does involve lethal voltages and potentially makes a uh, dangerous situation 
wherein an apparently low voltage that you would think is safe to touch is actually referenced to a high voltage supply. So definitely not uh, something that you want to try if you're not familiar with working with high voltage, but for those who are, it can be a very useful circuit for powering small scale electronics. Thank you for watching Dielectric videos, and I will see you next time.